with repeated dopamine seeking or triggering of dopamine release, it starts getting diminished, diminished, diminished. So pretty soon that behavior is not causing the release of testosterone. With no judgment whatsoever, it's not a moral thing. I'm just talking about what I do is I look at things through the lens of biology. We have to take a step back and now knowing what we know about testosterone and dopamine and all these things and, and ask what is pornography doing to the brain? Well, first of all, it's triggering the release of dopamine and in the short term testosterone by the observation of sex, not actually engaging in human contact. Think about the young brain being significantly more plastic and willing to rewire than the adult brain. Absolutely, there's no question about it. It's hyperplastic. And of course it can rewire again, but you think about somebody who engages in a lot of porn watching, right? And that person is getting dopamine and testosterone increases by observing sex, so that's concerning. And obviously the people vary, but it should come as no surprise that a lot of these people have trouble with romantic interactions when they do happen right? Because they, their brain isn't conditioned to respond to those. And these are private matters, so there aren't good data because there aren't laboratory experiments that you could do on this sort of thing. Also, dopamine seeking is what triggers the increase in testosterone. But as we just talked about it with repeated dopamine seeking or triggering of dopamine release, it starts getting diminished, diminished, diminished. So pretty yeah. soon that behavior is not causing the release of testosterone. Now people are just doing it compulsively to try and get some little droplet of dopamine out of their, out of their brain. I personally think that porn and the availability of porn is a real detriment to the developing brain, especially to the developing brain. Now, it sounds like you rescued the behavior and it takes some discipline, right? I imagine. And it it's one of those things that it's also anxiety-less compared to dating and relationships where people are vulnerable on both sides and have to negotiate things like consent and timing and, you know, and communication and all the things that are really hard to do, but are essential to do. That's, that's key. So I think Pornography is a serious issue. And because of the way that it taps into these very primitive systems, it's as serious in, in my mind as some of the other drugs of abuse, like the, the opioid crisis and talked about cell phones. You ever notice that when you get on a phone and you're scrolling Instagram, it's like a lot of fun. Like this stuff is cool. You're seeing people. And then sometimes you're on there and like, this doesn't feel good, but I'm doing it anyway. That's exactly how people talk about their drug use. That's exactly how people talk about alcohol use. That's exactly how people talk about gambling. You imagine this high, but the high doesn't show up and that's you, you're dopamine depleted. You need to take some time away from it and then come back and then you can enjoy it again. Now with pornography, it's a slippery slope right? There's also a whole aspect of pornography, which is that if people are pursuing pornography and they're not pursuing relationships, there is the potential that they reach their 20s and 30s and they are truly dysfunctional in terms of, look, every species has two major goals, protect the young and make more of itself. You know, whether or not you decide to have children or not is a, is a personal issue. And you think about what porn and masturbation, these things are, really are. I'm not calling them sinful. What I'm saying is they are potentially addictive especially with the availability of pornography. So beware, you know, just everyone's different and, and people have to be careful about these circuitries. You really need to protect them. They're super valuable. And so I would say in keeping with our theme of, you know, what are the other things to do to support testosterone would be, I would avoid pornography, frankly. Everyone's got their threshold for what's too much. For some people that might be, the number might be zero. For some other people, it might be something different and it's gonna vary. It would be different maybe using your imagination versus seeing images or like the difference between video versus, you know, old school way of like having magazines and things like that. Well, it's because like, it, it's like more fantasy and maybe, I don't know, maybe you thinking it through about this thing is different than you just watching or uh, even yeah. remembering past experiences. Yeah. So we can speculate there a bit. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words and a movie is worth a billion pictures when oh. it comes to the, the impact that it has on your nervous system. That's a bar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> and so I think it's fair to say that whatever problems exist in society today almost certainly existed a hundred years ago, but in a different form. We always think, oh, you know, stress was only there for the saber toothed tiger. And now there are no tigers. And we got this thing that's really unfortunate called stress. Look, let's imagine this was a hundred years ago. Spouses still cheated. People still died. You had you know, physical challenges, all that stuff is baked into us at a deep level. None of those circuits have changed. It's just the circumstances that trigger them change. So I think that a hundred years ago, it wasn't cell phones, but you can bet that there were forms of pornography. They, they were probably more cloistered away. They weren't, you know, as out there. So I think that what's healthy in this domain has never really been defined. This is one of the challenges. We know what an eating disorder is, but what's healthy eating? Where do you draw the line? I think Given this general theme that relationships are healthy, friendships are healthy, romantic relationships are healthy, and anything that inhibits the pursuit 
and functioning of, of healthy relationships is where you have to start saying, wait a second, I, is this behavior getting in the way? 